this is a challenging job, but this is an individual who's ready for a challenge uh, and has excelled every step of the way and will here with our support. So I just urge all of you to join me in getting behind uh, our next president and assuring that uh, he is successful for you and for us and for our state. So with that, allow me to introduce to you President Terrence Cheng. Thank you all so much for being here today. Um, I have some prepared remarks, but I do want to say a couple things real quick, um, just listening to the speakers, and um, I just feel compelled to make a, a few comments. Number one, uh, Dr. Gates, wow, you know, just wow. Being, being the interim president, being the vice president for academic affairs and provost, um, incredible work, incredible service, incredible dedication. Um, an enormous debt is owed to you by this system and all of its constituents. So thank you so much. Another round of applause for her, please. And, and Dr. Gates, you will, you will always be a faculty member. There is no such thing as a former faculty member. So please, please don't, um, you know, don't take that away from yourself. You earned that. So, um, and I have to say, uh, you know, a few more words about Ozma, she's a really hard act to follow. I'm just gonna, let, let's be honest here, this is uh, not easy. Um, when I met with the students, I'm, I'm, I won't be shy about it, and I hope no one on the search committee takes any offense, but we opened our WebEx meeting, and I said, this is gonna be the best meeting of my two days, you know, and it was. It was, it was great, it was a, 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 a brisk, energetic, intellectually supercharged, conversation um, and I was blown away you know I didn't quite retain that she's a Rhodes and a Truman Scholar and going to Oxford you know I, I don't know when you sleep I don't know when you eat I don't know when you you know watch a movie but apparently um, you know you are just uh, a wonder and I remember going home and, and saying to my wife after that meeting with her and the students and I said you know this young lady is gonna, she's gonna change the world. She's gonna light the world on fire. And if she doesn't, if she doesn't just take it over, she will absolutely change it. And so Southern, you should just be so proud of her. And, and wow, I just don't even know what, I have a lot of words, but I don't even know what else to say about her. So, <laughs> incredible. So thank you so much, uh, Chair Fleury, for your kind remarks, for your trust, and the board's trust that you're putting in me and appointing me to serve in this position. I am humbled to be tasked with such an incredible responsibility. And Asma alluded to this, this was part of our conversation, you know, as a person of color, as an immigrant, as the only child of uh, parents who moved to the United States, they, they left Taiwan, they had a good, a middle class life and they came to the United States when I was just a baby and um, my dad pumped gas, he stocked shelves at a grocery store, he had a really good job at Taipei University and uh, he did that kind of work to help us get by. My mom was a teacher, she's a teacher of English and she was waiting tables and you know they did all that so that I could have a life that would not have been possible in uh, Taiwan. And so it is a surreal experience for me to be here right now, to have this uh, charge, to have this responsibility bestowed upon me. And it is going to be one of my life's greatest challenges and one of my life's um, greatest honors. There's no question about that. And I consciously, cognizantly carry with me the legacies of my own family, but also for all the first generation and immigrant students that um, populate not just the great state of Connecticut, but so much of our nation. So it's also a bittersweet day for me. You know, I, I went to UConn Stanford in January of 2016. And in five years, we've done some pretty incredible things. You know, we opened residence halls, we started new academic programs, we hired dozens of wonderful faculty and staff and we strengthen partnerships and friendships and relationships around the whole state, all for the benefit of our students. 
and I think I had the real benefit of working with a spectacular team there as well. And so it is definitely a bit sad and a bit hard for me to uh, be able to move on from that. But an opportunity like this to lead Connecticut's system of public colleges and universities, this is a once in a lifetime honor. And that's not an exaggeration. It's not an exaggeration to say this happens to individuals once in a lifetime. It's a unique opportunity to work with and support all of CSCU's amazing faculty, staff, administrators, and of course the students. That's why we're here. We are here to help and work for students. So what an incredible opportunity to do that, to work with this group that touches the lives of countless students each and every day. You know, we're so fortunate to have a system of colleges and universities in our state that gives all of the residents of Connecticut the opportunity to pursue their passions and to receive a great education. And I have already learned so much about the great programs at CSCU that are making an impact. And I will continue to learn, and I vow to you that I will be always open to learning every single day that I am on this job. We should be proud of the advanced manufacturing technology centers that help make Connecticut a leader in defense and aerospace. We should be proud of the full spectrum of healthcare programs that are preparing leaders and practitioners to handle the next pandemic, including the incredible healthcare programs right here at Southern. We should be proud of our liberal arts programs that challenge our students to think morally, ethically, and strategically. The caliber of our STEM programs put Connecticut in a position to win the future with one of the most capable adaptable and nimble workforces in the country. And we have programs that allow people to turn their passions in everything from the culinary arts to early childhood education to horticulture into a productive and rewarding career. So in short, our system, our colleges and universities have it all. But all of this requires a remarkable amount of focus, commitment, and dedication. So it has to be said out loud, the faculty, staff, and students at CSU are engaged in doing this noble work, and it is noble work. They're doing it every single day. And they are making an impact in doing that work every single day. So what lies ahead of us now is the opportunity to bolster that work while still evolving, while creating new paradigms and meeting the needs of the future. So I am thrilled to be a part of an organization that prioritizes equity and access, that celebrates diversity and inclusion, and champions the dignity the social mobility, and the growth of all of our people. Every student who enters the doors of any CSCU institution deserves the opportunity to succeed in the classroom and to improve their prospects for a meaningful career. Because public higher education can be transformational. We know that. We see it every day, but still, too many people, too many students, and I mean traditional age students as well as lifelong learners, too many people don't have the opportunity to pursue their dreams and to achieve those goals. So CSCU today and tomorrow and into the future is committed to increasing equity and giving more students from all walks of life the opportunity to become the most positive, the most productive, and the most successful people that they can be. So before I turn it over to the governor, I want to again thank President Bertolino and his whole team here at Southern. Your work, particularly in social justice, is a shining example of the leadership in higher education that we need to really make a difference. 
and thank you for hosting us on this beautiful campus today. Again, I'm blown away by this building. I haven't been here in a few years, so just, you know, all of the energy, all of the beautiful construction here, um, it says so much about just how you go about thinking for and caring for your students. So thank you for that. To Dr. Gates again, thank you for all you have done, all you will continue to do. We got a lot of work to do, so rest up. As I said earlier, you're an exemplary academic leader, and I can't wait to work with you. And you know, last but certainly not least, we're going to hear from our governor, Governor Lamont. You know, Governor, thank you for, first and foremost, as, as Matt said before, for leading us through the pandemic. And I don't know if all of us fully understand um, how much has been done to carry Connecticut through the pandemic and where other states have not been able to make certain kinds of progress because of Governor Lamont and his leadership team. We as a state have been able to do that. And if you look at our vaccination rates, if you look at all of the metrics that are measuring success during this very difficult, challenging time, Connecticut's doing very well. And it's because of the leadership of Governor Lamont and because of his support and the state's support, CSCU has an incredibly bright future because Governor Lamont understands the value and importance of higher education to the future of Connecticut. So thank you so much for your time. And without further ado, Governor Lamont.